Over the last year, multiple cryptocurrencies have gone up in price by 100x or more. Now, while those kinds of gains are very hard to find at this point in the crypto market, double-digit percentage moves are still very common and easy to find if you know what to look for. Today, I'm going to tell you a few factors that can forecast a crypto price explosion and how to effectively trade these different events and announcements in the short term and long term. Before we start, there's a disclaimer I need to impart. Financial advice is not my field of expertise, so don't you dare follow my lead. This video is just an educational resource to help you on your journey to whatever stuff you decide to do. I am Guy, and if my face, voice, or name didn't jog your brain, please allow me to explain. The Coin Bureau is where you'll find some of the highest quality crypto content on the web. Coins, tokens, news, reviews, exchanges, tutorials, market moves, crypto taxes, and all the rest. If this is the kind of content you want, subscribing to the channel and pinging that notification bell would be smart. If you direct your gaze to the timeline below, you'll notice I've left a few timestamps you can use to skip over any topics you already know. Just be aware that watching until the end will give you some of the knowledge you need to help perfect your crypto portfolio. So now that you know what's up, let me tell you how to spot a crypto before it pumps. The first step to finding a crypto pump before it happens is to create a list of viable candidates. Specifically, find at least 10 coins or tokens that you think have potential. Ideally, these will be cryptocurrencies you've never heard of or looked into before, because it will help you be objective in assessing just how much potential that crypto really has. Not only that, but if you stick to cryptocurrencies that crypto influencers like me haven't covered, that means they're still not on most people's radar and therefore have that much more potential. Usually, you'll find these kinds of underground cryptocurrencies on the second, third, and fourth pages of CoinMarketCap. Note that the further down that list you go, the higher the risk there is. Now for the fun part, and that's to go through every cryptocurrency in this range one by one and do an initial analysis. There are a few things to look out for here. The first is the cryptocurrency's price history. The ideal candidate will be trending up over the long term without any strange price action or concerning gaps in volume, which can be seen on the bars below. If this coin or token wasn't around during the last bull market, even better. The lack of previous price resistance increases the likelihood that it will continue to rally, assuming it's in a long-term uptrend. The second thing to look out for is whether the cryptocurrency in question is a coin or token, i.e. whether the crypto has its own blockchain or if it exists on another blockchain. The ideal candidate is a coin with its own blockchain or a token on Ethereum, Cardano, or Solana. Be extremely wary of any tokens on the Binance Smart Chain or Tron. I don't think I need to explain why. The third thing to look out for is that cryptocurrency's exchange support, centralized exchange trading volume, and market depth. All of these can be checked using the Markets tab on CoinMarketCap. The ideal candidate will be listed on KuCoin at the very least, with lots of trading volume taking place on said exchange or other reputable ones, and a decent amount of market depth. Spoiler, most cryptocurrencies will not meet these criteria. The fourth thing to look out for is a strong community, which can be easily measured by checking out that cryptocurrency's social media, namely Twitter. The ideal candidate will have a large following with an engaged community relative to other cryptos with similarly sized market caps. The fifth and final thing to look out for is robust tokenomics, and I have a whole video which details the ideal candidate which you can find up there in the top right. So once you've put together a list of cryptocurrencies that could jump, the next step is to identify any upcoming events or announcements that could cause them to pump. Upcoming events and announcements can be divided into three categories, unpredictable, predictable, and delayed. A great example of an unpredictable announcement is Avalanche's recent $230 million VC funding round. AVAX predictably pumped in response, and while it would have been pretty hard to get into position before that pump happened, it is actually more doable than you think. T 
Typically, most people don't get word of this kind of news until they see it in a headline somewhere. And the headlines typically come from blog posts or tweets made by that crypto project. As such, an easy way to get ahead of this news is to regularly check the blogs of the projects you're following and turn on the notification bell for their Twitter accounts. When it comes to predictable events and announcements, a good example here is the recent rollout of Cardano's smart contracts on September the 12th. Cardano's smart contract date was announced way back in mid-August, meaning there was plenty of time to prepare for the pump. Now, the ADA holders among you will remember that there wasn't much of a pump on the day Cardano's smart contracts went live. This is primarily because the concurrency issues revealed during Cardano's smart contract testnet on September the 1st sent a signal to ADA investors that dApps would not be seen immediately after the Alonzo hard fork. I say this because September the 1st was when ADA hit its most recent all-time high, and in retrospect, that would have been the best time to take profits, something that die-hard Cardanians like me didn't see. In terms of delayed events and announcements, a perfect example is Shiba Inu's recent Coinbase listing, something which had initially been scheduled for June. Those of you who watched my Shiba Inu video will remember that Coinbase's listing delay was due to technical errors, which I found surprising because SHIB is an ERC20 token. In any case, SHIB finally listed on Coinbase earlier this month, and its price pumped by 50% as a result. Though there was obviously no way of knowing for sure when that announcement would come, any SHIB holders who waited patiently for the pump reaped the rewards. Now, if you're curious about how Coinbase decides to list cryptocurrencies, you can watch my video about that using the link in the top right. Once you've identified any upcoming events or announcements that could cause the cryptos on your list to pump, the next step is to try and figure out just how long the pump will last. As a rule of thumb, buying the rumor and selling the news is the best way to go. But as you heard a few moments ago, this isn't always a foolproof method, and this is for many reasons. For starters, there is a big difference between how large-cap, mid-cap, and small-cap cryptocurrencies behave. Most of the money invested in large-cap cryptocurrencies comes from big investors, be they individuals or institutions. This so-called smart money makes calculated investment decisions. By contrast, most of the money in mid- to small-cap cryptocurrencies comes from retail investors like you and me, and our investment decisions are driven mostly by our emotions. What this means in the context of predicting a pump is that you need to be able to think about cryptocurrencies you hold as both a VC investor and an ape. To make things easy, you can separate the candidate cryptocurrencies on your list into institutional-driven and retail-driven assets. Spoiler, most cryptocurrencies will fall into the ape category. In my experience, institutional-driven cryptos tend to have longer, more sustained pumps after bullish news. This usually lasts for days or more. Conversely, retail-driven cryptos will have shorter, more intense pumps after bullish news, which last for two days at most. In some cases, ape-driven pumps can last a lot longer because of retail ape psychology, and the crypto that comes to mind here is XYO Network. Coinbase announced on September the 8th that it would be listing the XYO token on September the 9th, and when it listed, it pumped by nearly 3x and stayed high for almost an entire week. If you're wondering why, take a look at the dollar values of the cryptocurrencies available on Coinbase. Until Shiba Inu listed, XYO Network was the lowest by dollar value. Now, an experienced investor knows that a low dollar value means nothing because it's the market cap that determines how high an asset could go. This logic means nothing to retail apes who see the low dollar value as a sign that this cryptocurrency is an easy way to get rich quick, and so they piled in. Not surprisingly, XYO began to crash once SHIB listed simply because SHIB bumped XYO out of its spot as the lowest cryptocurrency by dollar value on Coinbase. Ape psychology, remember it. Once you've assessed how long the cryptos on your list are likely to pump in response to upcoming events and announcements, the next step is measuring how high those cryptos could go. Now, there are many different ways you can measure this, but the first thing you need to check is the market cap of that coin or token. As I've mentioned many times before, the lower the market cap, the more room that crypto has to grow, 
regardless of its dollar value. This is because a low market cap means it takes less money to push up its price. As you've just seen, though, the average retail investor puts a lot of weight on the sticker price of any crypto. And I'm sure if you had a sat for every time your friends and family said they didn't have enough money to buy one BTC, you'd be richer than Satoshi. This brings me to the first way you can measure how high a pumping crypto could go, and that's to be on the lookout for any psychologically comfortable dollar values you could encounter on the way up. This includes ranges like 10 cents or 50 cents or $1 or $5 or $10, $50, $100 and so on. Now naturally, this approach is better suited for ape-oriented coins and tokens. Because of the profit-taking that's likely to take place around these levels, it's safe to assume that the price could top out slightly before those key levels are reached. The second way you can measure how high a pumping crypto could go is to use technical analysis, specifically previous zones of support, moving averages, and various indicators. Naturally, this approach is better suited for more mature cryptos. I happen to have an entire video dedicated to spotting the top using technical analysis, and you can find it up there in the top right. So once you've estimated how high and how long cryptos on your list could pump in response to upcoming events and announcements, the next steps are to decide how much to allocate and when to take profits. It should go without saying that going all in on a crypto you think is going to pump is a very bad idea. This is because there is no guarantee that the pump will play out exactly as you projected. It could start earlier or later, last longer or shorter, go higher or even go down in response to the news you're banking on. In a worst case scenario, your investment could go to zero. And though you've heard this about crypto before, it's especially applicable in this case. That's because it's safe to say that big cryptos like Bitcoin are here to stay, but the same can't be said for many of the altcoins you'll inevitably end up holding as part of your mission to the moon. As such, it's wise to put down only what you're willing to lose. Not only will this help minimize your losses, but it will also make cashing out easier if or when the gains start to come in. That's because it's really hard to take profits if you have a huge allocation and prices are going parabolic. Reducing your exposure will make it easier to abide by a risk-off profit-taking strategy. As I mentioned in my video about my personal crypto trading strategy, the irrationality of the market often means that any sort of logical analysis doesn't work when prices really start to pump. That's why I personally take profits based on the percentage gains I have, rather than any psychologically comfortable price points or price targets revealed by TA. More importantly, I tend to keep some of my coins and tokens in the race in case the rally continues. This can and often does happen, especially when market euphoria is at an all-time high. On that note, it's worth quickly pointing out that smaller altcoins don't always care about what the rest of the crypto market is doing. Altcoins almost always follow Bitcoin's lead, but there have been many instances of altcoins continuing to pump even as the rest of the market carries on dumping. Even so, it's important to be aware of what the rest of the market is doing and factor that into your measurements, allocations, and profit-taking strategies. If we're bleeding red across the board, you might want to reduce the height and length of any pumps you're predicting, reduce your allocations, and lower your cash-out expectations in the short term. Once you've decided how much to allocate and when to take profits for the cryptos on your pump list, the last step is to consider whether any of those cryptos has some serious longer-term potential. Chances are you'll come across a couple of these during your crypto quest, and you'll know you've found a winner when you see some, most, or all of the following features. First and foremost, there's a use case or utility for the coin or token that creates constant demand for it. This is because the constant buying pressure should increase its price over time. Second, the coin or token is listed on a few reputable exchanges like KuCoin and Binance, but has yet to list on any US exchanges like Coinbase, Kraken, or Gemini. This is because most of the money flowing into crypto is coming from the United States. And as regulators continue to crack down on offshore exchanges, more of this capital is staying on US exchanges. The thing to keep in mind here is that the cryptocurrency you think has long-term potential 
could be too similar to a security, i.e. a stock in a company, to US regulators. This means US cryptocurrency exchanges won't be able to list that coin or token. Now you can familiarize yourself with the criteria currently used to determine whether a cryptocurrency is a security or not by watching my video about the Ripple versus SEC lawsuit in the description. The third feature of a crypto with long-term potential is lots of partnerships with popular crypto projects and protocols. This is because the future of cryptocurrency is interoperability, and if a crypto project has made little to no effort to cooperate and integrate with its competitors, it will have a hard time flourishing in the future. The fourth feature of a crypto with long-term potential is lots of VC funding, assuming this VC funding comes after the cryptocurrency's mainnet has launched already. As I mentioned in my video about the most funded crypto projects, this is because any investments made by VCs post-mainnet are a strong sign that the project is legit and still has a lot of potential. The fifth feature of a crypto with long-term potential is constant development and innovation. This is because the crypto space is insanely competitive, and a failure to evolve can be fatal for a project. The last feature of a crypto with long-term potential ties into the fifth, and that's the absence of any serious competition within that crypto's niche. This is because a monopoly on a certain technology or use case is insanely profitable, as proven by Chainlink, which dominates cryptocurrency's oracle niche. Now, these are just a few of the features that define a crypto project with long-term potential, and you can learn about the others by watching my video on how to find promising altcoins. It's up there in the top right. They say you can't predict a crypto pump, but recently I found that these pumps usually have many of the same characteristics. This methodology can be summed up in a single sentence, and that's to pay very close attention to what's going on in cryptocurrency and be honest with yourself about what you see and what it means. I personally don't chase pumps, mainly because I don't think it's a sustainable long-term investment strategy. I prefer to stick to hodling and swing trading cryptocurrencies I believe to be legit, because there's more to life than chasing pumps and crying over dumps. Having said that, it is interesting to go digging through the lower levels of the coin market cap leaderboards every now and then and observing some of the crazy price action in those low cap altcoins. Which one could be next? That's my two cents for you today, folks. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to give that like a spike. Remember to subscribe to the channel and ping that notification bell if you want to keep getting quality crypto content with minimal hype. Now, a lot of you have been asking me if I could cover urgent topics in a timelier manner. Well, I'm happy to announce that you'll be able to find emergency crypto market, crypto project, and Coin Bureau updates on the Coin Bureau Clips channel from here on out. I'll still keep giving you the DL on Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram, so make sure to follow me there if you don't already. Better yet, join my Telegram channel to get my take on what's going on with the market in real time. Subscribing to my weekly newsletter is a must as well because it contains all the secrets to my crypto kingdom, as well as a detailed breakdown of my own personal cryptocurrency portfolio and how I'm adjusting it week to week. The Coin Bureau merch store contains all the crypto fashion you seek. Shirts, tees, NFTs, and other stuff that's hella chic. You can find your way to all these resources and more using the links down below. Thank you, as always, for your time. The pleasure, I'm happy to say, was all mine. Take care, folks, and stay crypto.